Why do we love to travel? Is it for the epic views from atop the highest peak? The unique landscapes? Is it the remote tropical islands? The lush green rice paddies? Or is it drinks by the beach? Unforgettable nights out with friends? Waterfall jumping? Zip lining? Checking off the world wonder list? It's gotta be the food, right? Oh, oh man. That one wins. Mm -hmm. All of these things are amazing parts of travel. But when we really stop to think about it, what gives us that indescribable feeling we all experience when stepping out of that airport, bus, or train station? You know, that sense of excitement you get when you're in a new place. Probably a better question is, what makes us want to go back to that place? Is it a single experience, a particular view or dish, or is it that all-encompassing word? Culture. We think we've been able to trace all of our passion and excitement of travel to a place's culture. That is, the differences in the daily lives of locals, the interaction with the owner of your go-to food stall, and seeing the essence of a neighborhood captured by a local artist on a giant mural. As travelers, that's what we crave. That's the kind of thing we look back on and reminisce about. Luckily, we didn't have to go too far to get that traveling feeling back. Welcome to El Segundo Barrio. Nestled near downtown El Paso is the Segundo Barrio. As soon as we stepped out of the car, it felt different. The border of Mexico mere feet away, people coming and going to and from Mexico, cultures literally so intertwined. You're in America, yet you hear Spanish and see Spanish signs. You're in America, but you see murals paying homage to women across the border who lost their lives to AIDS. Another mural honoring a priest who's known for riding his bike to deliver food to the elderly. You can see people walking, yes walking, to their local market for groceries. Kids making the best out of a bad situation playing wall ball in their favorite park. Frustrated residents voicing their concerns about bad legislation that leaves their favorite church out of a historic district. Not to mention a store specializing in the best pork rinds we've ever had. And the fact that you can get real authentic Mexican food without having to cross that border. The embracement of the Chicano culture, the creativeness of passionate artists that want to tell their story. The culture of this place is literally written on the walls. El Paso sucks. The food is terrible. There's nothing to do here. It's a shithole. Yes, those are real comments. And we often find ourselves getting angry at these type of comments. But we don't blame them. After all, that was us at one point. Not that we would take the time to write it on a YouTube comment, but that's how we felt. A lot of people feel this way about where they're from. We tend to go to the same restaurants, the same parks, take the same routes to work. That's why we travel in the first place, isn't it? To escape the norm of daily life? The fact is that it's hard to travel right now. Does that mean we're damned to an indefinite amount of boredom and shitty food in our shitty town? 
It's easy to feel this way because we time and time again make our happiness conditional to where we are. You can spend a week in Mexico eating unlimited Mexican food, lounging on a beach every day, sipping on a margarita, but by day six you're sick of the sand and you really want a Whataburger. It's not Mexico that has changed after a week, it's your perspective. It's your responsibility to learn to appreciate something as simple as a painting on a wall, to look into your neighbor's eyes and feel their frustrations, and to indulge in the amazing food you've taken for granted. You can choose to be bored out of your mind and complain about how much something sucks, or you can choose to look at things with wonder and excitement. With a small change in perspective, oftentimes that exhilarating feeling of travel is closer than you think. <laughs>